for longer than humanity remembers, the gods ruled. Humanity served as slaves, but life never remains in balance. Risen is an RPG by the small German video game development studio Piranha Bytes, which rose to fame there and in a select few other European countries, most notably Poland and Russia, for the critically acclaimed gothic video game series. Although Piranha Bytes games, particularly the first two gothic games, are considered to be masterpieces of role-playing games in the aforementioned areas of Europe, the studio and their games fail to achieve the same success globally. Whilst Gothic, the first entry to the series, established Piranha Bytes on the map of European game development, Gothic 2 is hailed as the company's greatest achievement to date, even almost 22 years after its release, over which another six Piranha Bytes games titles have been released. Following the fiasco that was the release of Gothic 3 and the loss of the rights to the prestigious Gothic brand to their publisher, Koch Media, Piranha Bytes had to come up with a new IP if they wanted to continue producing video games. And that they did. Risen was the first entry to what should eventually become Piranha Bytes' second trilogy. And although it has not nearly received as much love as Gothic 1 and 2 have, it was the first game for Piranha Bytes that I played personally and I fell in love with it and every other Piranha Bytes game since. I'll be to differing degrees. What follows are major spoilers for Gothic 3 and minor ones for Risen, for anybody who hasn't gotten around to play those 15 plus year old games yet. If you don't want spoilers, just skip ahead a few minutes. I would have inserted spoiler free chapters that you could have skipped to, but frankly I have no idea how to do that, so I'm just going to put a time step in instead. That shouldn't be too hard to figure out, right? Although Risen formally has no relation to the Gothic series, the canon ending of Gothic 3, in which the gods are banished from Mutana by the combined actions of Zardas and the Nameless Hero, seems to provide the backdrop for the events unfurling in Risen. The intro cutscene of the game informs us that the gods have abandoned humanity and in their absence, so-called titans escape their prisons underneath the surface of the earth and the oceans, causing all sorts of problems for the populace. The allures to the ending of Gothic 3 are evident and we can assume that Risen takes place in the same universe and in fact on the same planet as the Gothic series. Be that as it may, aside from the initial story setup, there are relatively few direct continuities between Risen and Gothic in terms of the actual world building. The established factions and characters of Gothic, such as the Orcs or the Kingdom of Mutana, or the various circles of mages and fan favorites such as Gorn, Diego and Lester don't make an appearance in Risen. Presumably for legal reasons due to the aforementioned loss of the gothic brand and all it entails. For myself, who played Risen without any knowledge of the world gothic was set in, that didn't matter however. Risen captured me from the very first steps on the beach of the island of Faranga, with its dense atmosphere created through a combination of brilliant sound design including the amazing soundtrack written by the one and only Kai Rosenkranz, who had worked on the previous Piranha Bytes titles, great weather effects and lighting, although the rest of the game's graphics wasn't quite up to snuff even back then, and a believable world which rewards the player for exploration, something Piranha Bytes does better than pretty much every other developer to this day, in my own humble and not at all biased opinion. Risen wasn't the first Piranha Bytes game to boast with a dense atmosphere and great exploration, however. These traits can already be found in Gothic 1 and 2, although Gothic 3 was a bit of a train wreck on release, fan patches have made it a decent experience in 2024, although the consensus still seems to be that it is the weakest one of Piranha Bytes Gothic games, which obviously excludes Forsaken Gods and Arcania, who are arguably much worse and nobody likes talking about. Gothic 3 was just too big and too ambitious to be accomplished to the same degree of quality as Gothic 1 and 2, although those games suffered from their share of bugs upon release as well. Piranha Bytes seemed to have come to the same conclusion following the disappointing release of Gothic 3, instead focusing on the strength it had displayed already in Gothic 1 and 2. A small believable world, chock full of interesting quests, items and characters for players to immerse themselves in, and to this day I believe Arisen excels at this just as much as Gothic 1 and 2 had. For this reason, and because of its more modern control scheme compared to Gothic 1 and 2's clunky tank controls, I believe Risen is the perfect game for players who haven't played any other Piranha Bytes games yet, but always wanted to give them a go. 
It has almost all of the strengths of previous titles without falling prey to the same issues Gothic 3 had and in a more modern engine than Gothic 1 and 2. In Risen, you play as yet another nameless hero come to save the world from a supernatural threat. Or at least just the island you find yourself on after being stranded there following a shipwreck caused by one of those pesky titans I've mentioned earlier. Following a short tutorial in which you make your way into the interior of the island, the game opens up and you can explore everywhere you want from the get-go. Granted that you don't get yourself killed by one of the more powerful enemies found in late game areas. Technically, you can start exploring even before the tutorial, but as a first time player that probably isn't what you're gonna do. Even I usually do the tutorial just for the XP. In true Piranabite's fashion, there are three factions on the island which you can join. The Inquisition, the Mages and the Bandits. The two former of these work together and reside in a fortress on the slopes of a volcano at the centre of the island. The latter has been relegated to the swamp. Mages are, no surprise, experts at magic, whilst bandits exceed at melee and ranged combat. Um, the Inquisition just sucks, don't play them, they're basically the bad guys. Jokes aside, the Inquisition focuses on a combination of offensive magic and star fighting, which isn't as good as other forms of melee combat available in the game, but the combination with magic is quite neat, and at the very least they offer a different approach to role-playing your very own nameless hero. The probably largest and by far best part of the game is exploring the island and its different factions in the first chapter and really finding out who you like and dislike and what playstyle suits you the most. Unfortunately, Risen drops the ball a bit after this initial part in terms of exploration, quests and storytelling, but on the plus side you get to see your character get stronger incrementally, smashing enemies that had previously done the same to you. Another hallmark of Piranha Bytes game design. Risen is a somewhat forgotten game. Although probably better than its direct predecessor and most of its successors, it rarely gets as much love and attention as Gothic 1 and 2. Undeservedly so. Risen takes the best parts of those games and puts them in a modern engine that still holds up to this day and doesn't make the same mistakes as Gothic 3. Because of this, I absolutely believe that you should give Risen a chance in 2024. It's a great game which you can regularly get for basically no money on sales and that will keep you entertained for about 30 to 40 hours for a single playthrough. And much longer if you want to explore all styles of gameplay and all the factions. Thank you guys so much for watching, this is going to be it for this video. This is the first time I've tried my hand at something like this. Um, so please let me know what you think in the comments below, all feedback is greatly appreciated. Uh, if you want to see a uh, full playthrough of Gothic 1 and 2, they're available on the channel, and I also regularly stream on Twitch, so say hello there if you want to. Cool, that's going to be it. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.